takes a leap of the imagination for a woman of the 21st century to realize what her life would have been like had she been born 150 years ago. We take for granted nowadays that almost any woman can have a career if she applies herself. We take for granted that women can choose whether or not to marry and whether or not to have children, and how many. But women of the mid-19th century had no such choices. Lower class women could be servants, domestic help, factory workers, prostitutes, etc. For them, life was an endless round of hard work and drudgery. As soon as they were old enough, they worked on farms and in factories. Even when they married and had children, housework was very hard without electricity or modern cleaning agents. On the other hand, in the 19th century, most working class girls got some, ed got some education. In the early and mid 19th century, the, the churches provided some schools. After 1870, in England, the state provided them. Middle and upper class women could help, in some cases with a family business. But generally, the economy and the society dictated that women should work in the home, taking care of home and hearth. They could be educated and could study, as long as it did not interfere with their housework. Any serious or passionate study of any subject was seen as harmful to the family. Physicians believed that if a woman became too scholarly, her uterus would become dysfunctional, possibly leading to madness. In a famous example of such limits on a woman, Robert Southey, the poet laureate of England, wrote a response to Charlotte Bronte's request for advice on pursuing a literary career, saying that literature is not the business of a woman's life, and it cannot be. Upon receiving this letter, Bronte suffered angst and depression, as her journal indicates, but eventually she did write and became a successful novelist under an androgynous pen name. Many cultural factors acted to restrict women's sexuality. For example, women were not supposed to have any real sexual contact before their marriage, especially if they were from the upper and middle classes. Coupled with the absence of appropriate birth control, which would really have to be supplied by the male, sex within marriage usually meant frequent pregnancy, especially as most arrears had laws, which guaranteed a husband his rights to his wife's body. Additionally, the death rate for women delivering a child was 1 in 200 in 1870. So, sex for women could be psychologically traumatic. Fashion evolves to complement this view of sexuality and control. Women began to wear long skirts and with layers of petticoats and then crinolines which made it both difficult for women to dress and undress by herself and time-consuming. As corsets develop, the woman's breathing becomes much more difficult, fading as a reaction to excitement or an improper situation is acceptable and frequent, as it denotes that a woman is truly a lady.